Well, good morning. Welcome to another session with Elizabeth Ann Ministries. I just give God praise for the opportunity to come and give another message that I believe is from the Lord. And I pray that you are inspired, you are encouraged, you are blessed. And I give God honor in all things this morning. Amen. I want to apologize for last week. There was not a message. And for those of you who was looking forward to a new message, I come to give an account because when you say and use your word and give your word that you will come on on Wednesday mornings and give a message and then there is no excuse or no explanation, we must all give an account. Amen. And so I want to apologize for a message not being available last week. I was with my mother, um, assisting my sister. Uh, we took her to have an eye surgery and God is so good. She came out of it with flying colors. And so I bless the name of Jesus. And I wanna request your prayers that I continue to be strengthened, be refreshed and be restored with the word of God to um, give you the truth and um, enlighten you on his goodness and what he needs to say the times that he gives me these messages. So please remember Elizabeth Ann Ministries in prayer. Amen. Well, the word of God is taken from Psalms 119, um, verse 89 to 91. And it says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to your ordinances, which are your rules and your regulations. And for all are your servants. And so when you talk about we all are his servants, it's pertaining to the earth, its creation, all of the earthly facilities of the mountains, the ground, fish in the sea, those in the air, and of course us humans here on earth. We all are the servants of God. We were spoken into being and created concerning him and his word. It says that his word is settled in heaven. That means it's established. His word cannot be changed. It cannot be altered. That means his word is pure. It is unchangeable. It is a steady word. It's unshakable. His word is determined and fixed and sure and immovable. Hallelujah. It's from all the same and remain unchanged eternally where nothing <clears throat> can alter it. There is no failure in it, no weakness in it. The Lord, who is the word, faints not. Glory be to God. And John 1, 1, it tells us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14 tells us also and goes further, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So God's Word is Jesus, and Jesus is um seated in heavenly places and guess guess who else is in heavenly places with jesus we are so this morning i come to talk about his word what are we saying what are our words you know as we look at the word of god and its faithfulness and the power we use it as christians um the word of god say we shall decree a thing and it shall be established and our words can either condemn us or help us increase us. My God, you know, I saw a statement um, on Facebook and it talked about the power of the tongue. You know, the word of God tells us that death and life is in the power of the tongue. But it, it said something that caught my attention concerning that tongue um, that it said that the tongue has no bones, but it is strong to break a heart. So be careful with your words. And that was 
posted by A. W. Tozer Theological Seminary. And um, A. J. Tozer was uh, a godly person, but full of so much information. He wrote books, and I want to encourage you to seek him and his books um, one day to grow even further in Christ. I thank God for the examples that he's left for us and the information and, of course, the Word of God, um, the Bible. Amen. So I want to ask you today, what are you saying? What's coming out of your mouth? You know, in Hebrews 4.12, it goes even further to tell us, for the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of our thoughts and intents of the heart. There is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. So when I can come on and say, forgive me um, for not having a message, I still have the given account, even though I'm putting a message out here on YouTube when I believe, okay, I can get away with it. No, the Holy Spirit reminded me, you must give an account. And so if we're representing Jesus, if I am at this ministry, then I have to give an account. But he said to talk about his word, his word, and the words that you're saying. Are you standing on the word of God? What's coming out of your mouth? Are you doubting the word that God has given you? Are you in a situation where you have forgotten to use his word, to lean on his word, to trust in his word? How are you looking at that situation now? And what are you facing? Is there a word in the scripture, as an example, that you can look to and trust God in? I come by to encourage someone today. Are you facing a court case? Are you looking forward to a loan and need help? You need medical assistance. You have a medical issue. You have a financial issue. You're looking for a job. Come on. I want to let you know that God is able to do it for you. Has God ever come through for you and you've forgotten? You know, in the word of God, it says in Matthew 13 how um, Jesus gave the story of the word and how it is planted. And he gave the different stages of how we, when the word is given to us, first, we hear it with so much joy, but there is no depth because there are words that are thrown by the wayside. Soon as we have trouble or issues come up, we are persecuted, it tells us that we're overwhelmed and we forget the word that we heard. But God wants you to know that he knows you. He knows where you're at. He knows where you're located because it were his word tells us. As being settled in heaven, his word would not return unto him void. It would accomplish where it is sent. So what are you saying today that you've forgotten that God answered your prayers at one time, that God came through for you when things were rough and tough? God said, put you in remembrance. We are to remind God of his word when we see things getting tough and things go awry and nothing is going in alignment for us. We as children of God. So I come by to tell you, Things may look dim, things may look dark, but be of good cheer. Jesus said he has overcome the world. And so we want to use the power of his word. We want to apply that word to our life. You know, I've heard the statement that knowing the word of God is power, but applying the word of God is power. You can know the word, you can have all the information you need and still don't use it. You can be fearful of using it. Amen. But if you're applying that word and you're walking in that word, you're believing on that word, 
you're trusting in that word, then it will not fail you. His word says it doesn't return unto him void. It accomplishes where it is sent. Glory be to God. I remember one day my son came home. He was around four, going on five. And he was afraid to go back to school. I picked him up and um, he had a terrible night that night getting to sleep. And he, he decided, I'm going to tell mommy what's going on. And I listened to him and um, he said, mommy, this person in school called me this color and said some negative words to him that really um, hurt him and it affected him. And he said to me that I don't ever want to go back. And so it was difficult for me because I had to take him back to the daycare the next day because I had to go to work. No one was home to mind him and care for him. So I had to deal with this that night and I prayed and asked God to help me with it. And those words broke him down affected his heart, made him feel insecure, um, degraded him, and I had to love up on him. I had to tell him, look, Jesus loves you, and I had to do some other stuff. You know, like when we have these small kids, we have to do all kind of stuff to make them feel loved again and secure. And then I would have to put him in the car and take him back to that monster of a person he thought was very rude. So I, I had to discuss it with the principal, and we got some things ironed out, and um, I'm sure she went beyond the call and had to keep him nearby her throughout the day so that we could make him feel more secure again. But I ended up changing him and putting him into another school, so I thank God for that. But what are your words doing to other people? Just how you would want to be encouraged, you would want to be um, get an answer from the Lord or a word from a person you trust that can encourage you, that can enlighten you and help you see things in a better way, assist you, what are you saying? Let's remember that if God's word is settled in heaven and it's pure and honest, then we must be careful in what we're saying and our words. We want to build up people, not break them down. We want to help them and assist them. And, um, be such a positive person in their life that they're happy to see us when um, they come to us for advice or answers or word or encouragement. Amen. I just want to remind you today, if there's someone who's hurting and you've heard a negative word, God says, I know you, I see you, I hear you, but be of good cheer. I've overcome. And so the words of our mouth, Father God, help us to align them according to your will and help us to be conscious of what we're saying to others. The word of God says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So we want our words to be trustworthy. We want to believe that we're doing what we say. We believe in the word of God. And I want to remind someone who might have forgotten that you can still use and trust in God's word and your answers may not be here yet, but continue to trust in his word, believe him. His word is upholding the earth. Hebrews 1 tells us it's holding the earth and his word, um, glory be to God, has been classified as pure. It gives light. Okay. It says that his word has been um, referred to as milk, bread, meat, solid food for our spirit, medicine to our flesh. His word has been declared as a washing, sanctifying water, reflective mirror in Hebrews 4, where it locates our situation, our condition, and what we're going through. His word is a honing hammer. It beats down the enemy when he comes and brings negative words in our minds. It's a refining fire, and his word is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And so we're going to depend and believe his word and use that word as a tool that he's given us in our hands to use today. Glory be to God. His word is infinite. It's full of integrity. His word is Jesus. Glory 
glory and honor I give him today. So I pray that whoever is going through, whatever you're going through, that God gives you a right now word to encourage you and enlighten you and lift you up. Amen? Let us pray. We pray today, Father God, to guide us today, to help us to be a doorkeeper at our lips through your Holy Spirit. Help us, Father God, to build up each other, to encourage each other, to help each other. Give us the right words to say to, some, to, say to someone who may feel less than a person today, who may be broken, who may feel hopeless, who may be overwhelmed by life's issues and problems, who may be going through a financial downfall. Pray for those who need a touch from you today, Father God, those who may be weak and need to be strengthened. We declare the word of God, for your word says that let the weak say I'm strong. Amen. We declare that over someone today. We pray for the homeless, those who are sad, Father God. Pray for those who may be depressed today. We pray, Father God, for those who may feel misused, those who may be hungry and need something to eat, those who may need a roof over their heads, Father God. We pray for the peace, the minds that need peace, not as the world give it, but as you give it, Father God. And we bless your name today. We pray for your people. Hear the cries of your people today, Father God. And we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed until another time and another session. Hallelujah to Jesus. <laughs>